I told y'all, y'all would look on it. One cross, three nails, equals forgiveness, and y'all still won't look. Y'all still not looking. And had a nerve to tell my wife this morning about joy, about turning your, your water into wine, turning the word into wine. And y'all agreed that like y'all turned into it. Now I see why God has allowed me to come to the word because everybody this morning is taking communion. Everybody's taking some that deal with God's body, but they're taking it unworthy. And every time y'all hear God's word to him, y'all taking it unworthy because y'all are not doing what it says. The Bible tell her, I mean, so the doctors tell her, he said, I give you sick to sick pills. I need you to take all of them. We take 33 because we feel better. We do part of the Bible, some of the Bible, but not all the Bible. You know why I'm finding out preachers don't really believe the Bible. Apostles, they don't really believe the Bible. They don't take it to the fact that how Jesus said, whatever my father said, that's what I believe. Amen. We put our own antidotes in our medicine. Yes, Thank you, God. Thank you. But I, I had a word and I thought I was going to preach it and, 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 and let me know I ain't in control. God said, that ain't what I want. Yeah. And he gave me this. And I know a lot of y'all been saying, no, Apostle Solo start doing a lot of uh, demonstration. Sometimes that's the only way y'all see. Don't mean it changed none. But John the sixth chapter. Cause I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna run that just run your mouth. I like proving it by the word. And I'm finding out that 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 preachers, they can preach the logo. But they don't have a rhema word. They don't have a spoken word. Makes a big difference. I know y'all don't know what that is. St. John the sixth chapter, beginning at uh, well, let me begin to that. Come on, Terry. At the sixth verse. Could have started a lot of places, but I'm going to start there. It said, many there, for, many there of his disciples, when they heard this saying, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew of himself, in himself, that his disciple mama at it, he said unto them, do this offend you? What an if, what an if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. It is the spirit that quicken, the flesh profit nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, said, therefore, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except he was given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, I have not have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil? Oh, Heavenly Father, in Jesus. God, you do this mess how you want to do it. Reveal truth to these people that sit here today. 
that hearing over the broadcast. God, because they can do the logo, but they don't have no rainbow spoken word from you. So God, speak this word to your people. Reveal to them the power and the demonstration that will go on today. And God, we forever give you the praise because you said you be lifted up from the earth. You said you'll draw all men unto me. God, I come to lift up that name that's above every name. And that name is Jesus. Holy Ghost, have your way in this service. Holy Ghost, have your way in this service. Holy Ghost, have your way in this service. It is critical time right now. Holy Ghost, have your way. And God, we forever give you the praise. We give you the thanks. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And every heart can say amen. 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 And you can have your seat. God is so awesome. All by himself. I, I just want to talk to y'all a few minutes. And I think I, I want black and white because we all know tradition in the world of tradition, everybody's taking communion today. Yeah. And I never feel I figured out, but it went in the scripture. I try to research it, but I never figured out. Why do the women wear white and the men wear black on communion Sunday? <laughs> I ain't never figured that out. If the men's in darkness and women's is pure, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. See, we take so much tradition stuff from man and we use it in the church, but they never explain communion. They never explain why God has communion. And see, that's what I'm talking about. The logos is the written word, them 66 book of God. Any man can preach from the logo, but any man don't have no ream of spoken word from God. Look it up. Y'all can look it up if you want to. You know, I like to be researched. Psalm 120 and 7 said, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Every time I speak, it is for war because it's, for, it's a rhema word. It's a word that came from the scripture that hadn't been revealed to man. And that's why people are fighting me so much because they don't have a rhema word. So God dealt with me on that. And he started talking to me. He said, Terry, use the communion table and, and demonstrate it. But I'm not going there first because communion didn't start first. It was John that started first because Jesus was explaining to the disciple, you got to eat me. And he was talking about him. He was talking about his word. He was talking about his word. He said, y'all got to eat this. Y'all got to eat me. Y'all got to... Get me inside, y'all. And see, that's what the Holy Ghost do. See, the Holy Ghost don't talk of itself. It only talk of the Word. So if you ain't got the Word in you, the Holy Ghost can't pull from you. It said the Holy Ghost bring you back and remember of all things that God has said. And now we got preachers in the pulpit that logo preacher, but not a rhema word. They're not hearing to have a revelation from God. And see, in order to get a rainbow word, you got to have the Holy Ghost. So I'm finding out a lot of preachers don't have the Holy Ghost. Oh, y'all ain't got to say nothing. I, God dealt with me on this. And, I, and, I, and when he started talking to me, he said, Terry, it started at John because God had the disciples. He was trying to prepare them. He had 82 disciples walking with him. And when he got to this pastor right here, and he told me, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, seven and left him. And that's what he tell me all the time. Terry, you ain't never had seven and leave you at one time. He said, I had seven because they were fleshly. They didn't understand I was talking spiritual. They didn't understand I was talking about my spirit, not my actual flesh. They went back to the little village of law and seen where they didn't want to eat flesh or blood. But we got communion. And we doing the same thing they did. Because we might as well be walking away from God. Because he said you shouldn't take this unworthy. We shouldn't get God's word and we sit in him. We take communion every time we eat God's word. And now everybody do a tradition because they wear black and white and they take it on the first Sunday and everybody go to communion because they think communion is going to get them right. But he said you shouldn't take this unworthy. So he's telling us, when y'all come in here and we give y'all the word and y'all do what y'all want to, y'all taking God unworthy. This is what it says. Let me break to unworthy to you. Not deserving. Huh? 
not paying really attention, yeah. effortless, yeah. no respect for God's word. We in him right now. Every time the word, he said the word become flesh, it came out to 42 generations and died for y'all. And y'all won't look at the cross, you won't look at his word, he left his word for y'all, and y'all won't be able to do the word. He said, don't just hear my word, and y'all in here are just hearing God's word. Your mind will have on black and white. Because you ain't here to eat God's word. He said, undeserving, unqualified. That's what y'all do to God's word when you take it unworthy. You don't have no mind to do it. And then he give you pastor after your own heart that don't fed you with knowledge and understanding. And you still won't eat because it's your desire, it's your heart. And everybody want to go to a church where it only makes their flesh feel good. This is what he said. He said, unfit. Unseemly, unprofitable, unbecoming, unsuitable, like value, worthless. That's the way y'all do God's word. It's worthless. It ain't fit. In other words, when he died, it was good, but now it's evil. Y'all heard that Friday? Y'all heard that Friday? Everything God's word said to y'all, y'all make it evil. Yeah, y'all make it evil. Y'all ain't studying it. Y'all ain't studying it. This is what it said. He said, insufficient and worth, undeserved, a bad plan, unworthy. Huh? He said, this is what they had, Terry. He said, they ain't got their own thing. He said, unworthy. If a person or thing is unworthy of something good that do not deserve it. But as I passed by and beheld y'all devotion, I found an altar in your spirit. The unknown God is dwelling in y'all. So I ain't talking to y'all. He's telling y'all that. And I said, one cross, three nails, equal forgiveness. And y'all still God unworthy to y'all. Y'all ain't studying. Y'all ain't praying. Y'all ain't in God's word. All over the world ain't in God's word. But today, they're going to break bread with the Lord. They're going to drink of his body and they're going to eat of his, his body. They're going to drink and eat. Y'all know the body was his, the crack, the crack is his body. When they drink, it's his blood. They doing it unworthy. And the preacher won't tell them that. They kill them in the church. But y'all get killed by every preach word, every Bible study. All y'all, every y'all in here, your children, the stuff we tell y'all don't do, you do your, don't do with your children. Live this way for your children. You're married. Your marriage should be this. Unworthy. It's unqualified, unfit. It's evil too. What, yeah, it's evil what we say to y'all. Until you want to do what you want to do. So what he said, he's talking to us and he wants us to understand that I'm God and I'm God all by myself. This is how he said in John 6 and 47. I'm going to take this to my time with this one because I want to help you when you make your departure from earth. I want to make you a lecture where you're going. I want to make it right to you. I don't want you to leave and question where we going. This is what he said. He said in 47 verse, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you. He talking to somebody. This red. He said, he that believe on me has everlasting life. I am the bread. I am that bread of life. You know, and most times people tell me they believe in God, but they ain't got faith in God, or they tell me they got faith in God, but they don't believe in God. I don't find out that preachers don't believe in God. Because any time you can tell somebody that they can wait till they die and get on their deathbed, and then they can make it right with God, that I know that's God's call, don't y'all? Y'all ain't got the question now. I understand that. Why would I have to think that's okay? When he said, remember that I created now you. Why would I think that? When he tell me, you must be born again. When he tell me, faith without works is dead. Why would I think that? Why, why would I think that? 
Why, why, why would I think that? When he tell me, Terry, the ways of sin and death. Why would he tell me that, that I can make somebody or I can go and preach something that they can still make it in? It's God called, but what you've been preaching to them all the other time. God showed me something. I spent time with him, man. I, I spent time with him. He showed me something. He said, Terry, he talked to me. He said, people today is living in a kind of way and still want to make it to heaven, but they are not doing what the words say. We can, we can draw up any kind of way. I can tell all y'all y'all going to heaven. I can tell all y'all when y'all die, y'all going to heaven. But when you get to stand before God, what I said don't matter. Y'all can say they can wait there. Why would anybody don't reject the God word all their life and get on their deathbed and the doctor said they're going to die, then they want to confess Christ. Now y'all think God a bucket head? That he didn't know, he created him and he didn't know him. And then he tell me he know the thought and the tips of my heart. He don't know you wait until you die. I don't believe he's going. This is what he said. He said, people said, I preach wrong. But my God loves how I preach because I don't change his word for nobody. Not even myself. See, we got preachers that change God's word because... They ain't talking to God mouth to mouth. They ain't hearing God mouth to mouth. Because if they did, you wouldn't think that. A lot of them preaching, but they're not mouth to mouth. Look what he said. He's talking to preaching or compromising God's word for the people. The doctor said take all of the medication. But he answered and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word, that means all the medication. That means every sick and sick book we should live by. We shouldn't make it no excuse because somebody, oh, I bothered because you said gay. God said gay is wrong. Don't get mad with me because you just, you, you just got a problem. He said smoking is wrong, homemonging is wrong, fornication is wrong, how lying is wrong. He said all of it is wrong. But they don't want to say that. Coming in the church with a sin dressing in a kind of way. Huh? Ignoring God's word, eating God's word, unworthy. We ain't in here, so we ain't in here. This is what he said. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but everywhere that be seed out of God's mouth. And now we make excuses. God said, live by my word. You hawk in your heart. You make your, your shoulder as a hammer stone. You bother with God. This is what he said. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me has everlasting life. I am that bread, I am that bread of life. You hear that? He said, and he started telling me, your, your daddy and, and your mama him, ate in the wilderness and they died. But this bread that I'm talking about, you don't die. You go to sleep. You see what I'm saying? But y'all don't believe that. Y'all don't believe that. Y'all been eating this word unworthy. This is what it said. He come back in the 50, 51, 50, verse 51. He said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the same bread is what y'all rejected. The same word, the word that we are preaching here, the church is rejected. You would rather take this communion than to eat the real communion. With to eat the right manner, to eat the right word of God that's going to give you life everlasting. This cracker right here ain't going to give you nothing. You might as well just went to the Walmart and got you some real rich crackers. Because this ain't going to give you nothing but a crack in your mouth. And that's our problem. That was wrong with the church. It tastes pretty good too, but that ain't gonna get you to heaven. It's what it says. He's talking to us because we want to play. And for years after years and years, people are taking communion unworthy. And y'all eating at him every service unworthy. And then want to put on a black and white outfit. Find that in the scripture. This is what it says. He come back, he said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give 
It is my flesh. And y'all know the word became flesh. So if I preach you the word, if I preach you the word, and you reject it, I, 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 I stick the mouth down because you're trying to lose weight. Here y'all, I had, I had a guy told me, he said, man, you, 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 can, you can be. I said, one time I want to say myself. I said, I don't never want to be that. But you know what I told him? That my man is so good at a job. Tell me what side my spirit weighs. Give me, that, give me that scale. Give me that scale. Give me what my change has made. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Have by my devotion. This is what he said. This is what he said. He come back. He's talking to us. He said, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give you is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. For God so loved the world. And we want to take communion on the first Sunday to recognize him and remember. But the whole three weeks and the week before that, we lived in a kind of way. Ain't that so? This is what it said. He's talking to us. Then he come on down. He said, then uh, 50, 53rd verse said, he said, then said Jesus unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. <coughs> so what we say to them, y'all ain't eating, y'all ain't drinking. You're dead. You're dead. It's in the scripture. In other words, let me just tell y'all, this is not logo, this is rhema. This is spoken word to y'all from a man of God that got a word from God. <laughs> y'all ain't got to say nothing. Everybody ain't got that. Y'all ain't, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all. That's okay, that's okay. This is how it said it. It said Christ's body was a sacrifice. Christ's blood was a tomb. The word flesh should be killed for you. Then he come back and said, John 1 and 14, he said, and the word was made flesh and dwell among us and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And people try to tell me about grace, but they don't tell me about truth. He said, full of grace and truth. I love God right there. He saw also, and he said, whosoever, whoso eateth my flesh and drank my blood, has eternal life, and I will rise him up <coughs> up at the last day. And God trying to tell us something. He said, look, Terry, they do not want to do this because they have a problem with the truth. This is how we get to communion. In 1 Corinthians 11, y'all ain't got to turn now. Oh, God got it right here. And when he started, I'm going to start at the 11 and 23rd. And then when God started telling him, because he had already, they had already walked away from him in the, in, the, in the beginning. So he come over here in 1 Corinthians in 11 and 23. He said, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. He said, I gave y'all this, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given them, he break it and said, take this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this and remember. He didn't even say you have to do it. He said, do it and remember. He's telling them, he said, after the same <clears throat> manner, also he took the cup and he, he sucked saying, this is the cup of the New Testament. In my blood, this do as often as thou remember. <coughs> and he said, for as often as he eat, it, you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord death until he come. And that's how we get him. 
in the church this morning? Communion. Yeah. All over the world, eh? most people take a communion. This is my body. And then what everybody doing this morning? They taking their body. They got it. They're going to take eat his body and drink of his blood. I needed that. <laughs> they get through, but they took it on word. <laughs> Let me explain to y'all why I say on word. He come back and said, he said, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, that little piece of cracker, and drink that, whatever, you Jew, he said, drink the cup of the Lord, unword. I always tell you what word, word. He said, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Shall be guilty. He said, they shall be guilty. The same thing y'all doing, if we ain't taking communion, Every time I preach to y'all, y'all are guilty. God said, you're guilty. Y'all know what he said. Don't act like y'all don't know. He said, they are guilty. He said, he said, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. He said, but let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread in the cup. See, they ain't telling people, before you take that, you ought to examine yourself. That's why y'all ought to stop coming to him to show you eating unworthy. You come in after you hit the mess, but what you did was already seen. So you should have examined yourself before you come to church to make sure you don't repent before you even get him. But see, y'all call it that evil. Because what you said you did, you didn't think it was bad. Oh. <laughs> so you had to hear the word to say, God, forgive me. Yeah. This is what it said. You can't defeat the demon you enjoy playing with. Y'all can't do that. You can't get rid of what you like. This is what it said. He come back in the 29th verse. He said, he that eat it and drink unworthy, eat it and drink it damnation to himself. And then they said, he preached too hard. He do no, I explained it right. He said, everybody eating today, everybody drinking today, if they haven't examined themselves, if they haven't got it right with who they should have got it right, that's just what I'm telling y'all. When we tell y'all to get it right with somebody, y'all don't get it right, and y'all come and get it right with God, y'all taking it unworthy. Y'all taking God how y'all want to because y'all telling God, I know what's good and I know what's evil. And what you telling me to do is go get it right with somebody, to, that is evil to me. I'm going to get it right with God because I'm my, I'm my own God. To the unknown. This is what he said. He said, examine yourself. My word today Eating God's word unworthy is a silent killer in the church. The ways of sin and death, eating the truth unworthy and ain't changing, it's a silent killer. Y'all don't even know you got diabetes. Y'all don't even know you got cancer. Y'all don't know you got emphysema. Y'all got all kind of stuff because you eat God's word unworthy. Right here, right here in the church. Y'all rebellious to God's word. The world is rebellious to God's word. And I said seven years ago, I said, the churches don't start accepting anything. Preachers wearing hats in restaurants. Preachers doing this. See, that was a rhema word spoken seven years ago. Now they doing it like it ain't nothing. They wearing hats in restaurants, hats in church. I was a joker coming here with a hat on. He could do just like the other one did. Get your bag and get up out of him. You is not disrespecting God's house in them. They said, well, you should have you gave him some, some, uh, some chance. They don't give you a chance in the courthouse. Why y'all got the diamond play? Dummy, dummy play my God down. This is what he said. He's talking to him. He said, and he, for he that eat it and drink it unworthy, eat and drink damnation. 
huh, to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, not recognize this, just not know anybody. And that's why I tell everybody, you can say what you want to. You can come to church, drink, in, dress any kind of way you want to. But one thing about you, if you were going out a little chicken head, you wouldn't dress in a kind of way. So don't come before the king like that. It makes me sick to not to see that the church don't dumb it side down because they trying to accept the world. No, the world needs to accept the king. Every man in him got on the suit. Every man. We, we coming for the king because we the priest and we got to show the, the family how it's supposed to be done. And now everybody wearing tennis shoes to church, preaching with tennis shoes, holding their jeans, all that. Because why? They just logo preaching. Because when you talk to him mouth to mouth, like Moses did, that means that's a revelation, that's communion. That's why he could tell me Monday, I thought I had the word, but he could tell me too to put that up. That's my boss. That's who I punch into. I don't have a chance to tell him no. This is what he said. He's talking to him. He said, for this call, now do what y'all got to do to All y'all been eating God's words. This is what it said. This is in the scripture. That's 1 Corinthians 11 and 30, just in case y'all didn't know. He said, for this call, many are weak in the church. Weak in the church. You sitting there, you wonder why you sick. And you, you taking communion unworthy. You ain't reading your Bible. That's why I told y'all, he dare not. You can't look at the cross, but he left the 66 book, and you won't look at the word. He said, you are weak in the church. We got people weak in the church because the preacher, he said, for to give them knowledge and understanding, you for to break communion down. When we get ready for communion, we get a week or some teaching on it to let people hear, to go get it right. But we communion all the time because we break bread all the time. We ain't one of them church. We ain't one of them church talking about if you give me five dollars, you can get in. We ain't one of them churches. This is what it said. This is what it said. Y'all got to remember this. First Corinthians 11 and 30. He said, For this call, many are weak and sickly among you. And people taking it. Everybody taking it today. Coming in and smoking. Throwing the butt outside, just got drunk last night, just got out of the bed with somebody, a liar, a whole monger, bull dagger, dyke, sister, all kind of stuff. Crooked preacher in the pulpit, pedophiles in the pulpit, and then we pass out his body. What wrong? I'm worried. You ain't take it. Which way you want to get right? You know I'm worthy. See how fast I change your mind? You know it was unworthy. But you'll take because I tell you. And that's what the preachers do to them. They give it out to people and they take it. You knew it was unworthy, but because I said you ain't going to take it, you went on and took it. That's what I'm telling you about the preacher. They doing that stuff. He said, look, he said, not deserving, effortless. Huh? Not respected, undeserving, unqualified, unfit, unseen, unprofit, unbecoming, unsuitable, lack of value, worthless. That's the way y'all feel about God's word. That's why everybody get mad with it. That's why I said, ain't no joker can live a hundred years, get on his bed, and the, and the doctor tell him he's gonna die two days later, he gonna make it in. I know that God called, but in the 66 book, it don't say that. It talk about if you don't obey him, you got problem. What well, give me a right to make, to make it okay? Unless I don't put somebody away that I thought, and I, and I ain't, ain't no problem. If I went to Cam, Cam up in the die, I'm going to kind of get Cam to confess Roman 10, 9 or confess Christ as the prayer to say, but that's still God called. I just said I don't believe. I ain't trying to be God. I just, I just feel like that is the way God do. This is what he said. He said, for, for this call, men are weak and sick among you. And then he said, men are asleep. 
They dead in the church. They dying in the church. Taking God's word unworthy. Uh-huh. You ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to say nothing. Let me show you. I'm going to skip a little bit. He said, 2 Peter, y'all ain't got to move. Y'all just, y'all good. He said, first, first, 2 Peter 1 and 10, he said, wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling a lecture. I told the preacher today, that's what I don't do. I don't make my elect a sure of my calling that I won't compromise God for nobody, no preacher, mama, daddy, sister, brother. I ain't compromising God's word. What it said is what it is. If you is a dyke, bull, dyke, assistant, if you homemonger, if you pedophile, if you're doing all that stuff, if you're smoking, drinking, you're lying, you're cussing, all that, fornicating, you got a little seminary, all that stuff, it's against God, it's wrong. But I'm going to go somewhere where I ain't got to hear that. That's okay. You should have been there. This is what he said. I gave it up. That's when he blessed me. Oh, I let it go. That's when he blessed me. I said, have your way. That's when he blessed me. Oh, I have to say, that's when he blessed me. Lord, you promised me you will hear my plea. That's when it blessed me. And you did just what you said. He ain't doing that without that. He, 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 y'all can gamble. Y'all can keep playing. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to. He ain't doing it. The logo word is the written word. And everybody can preach from the written word, but the rhema word is the spoken word. In other words, the logo means the word referred to Christ himself, the holy word of the scripture. That's a logo word. But the rhema is, but another word is the New Testament referred to the word as in the spoken word, known as rhema, is the spoken word of Jesus. Because he gave you something that everybody else didn't get from the scripture. And what he gave you, he gave you something that other people don't see. That's what I was trying to tell the, the, the church last night. I'm so glad of the leadership here because I get rhema words, words that I ain't studied like that, but it's a rhema word to give me more or make me research more. See, God ain't got no word just in me. God got word. He can get word from anywhere if you spiritual. So I'm not one to mention. A lot of preachers want to mention like because they're the leader. They feel like can't nobody tell them nothing. This is what it said. He come back, he's telling us, he, he told us in that scripture, he said, examine. This is what he said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. He said, examine yourself, whether you be of the faith. He said, prove your own self. See, then we're all, then we're all on us. We eating God's word, but we ain't proving nothing. We ain't saying that we got the faith. Ain't no way no joker live 100 years and ain't got no faith, and then all of a sudden when he died, he got faith. Come on, y'all. He said, with that faith, it's impossible to please him. That what he said? This is what he said. He's talking to them. He said, they got damnation. He said, the act of damning is a state of being damned. That's what you got when you eat God's word on word. We damning ourselves. And we wonder why we feel bad sometimes. We will never feel like nothing going right. We damning ourselves. We sitting to him. You don't know. You don't know what's going on with your body right now. Y'all don't know what's going on with y'all body right now. Y'all are some rebellious people. And people don't want to go with truth. I told my wife this morning, how could you hear truth and know it's true and don't get there? You think I'm going to play with my life when I could die tomorrow? Digga McGee almost going to kill me yesterday. I ain't know. But like Trina said, you better be ready. This is what he said. He tell us to examine ourselves. Y'all hear that? He said, examine yourself. That was the Raymond word said, examine yourself. To inspect closely. We ain't examine ourselves. Because we were, we'd be doing that before we got to church. That's why we were coming here looking crazy and singing. We didn't got a nerd that want to look mad at God talking. Y'all kill me with that. Disrespecting God, frown all up and get out in the world and start laughing, showing all his teeth. 
using his muscle to, to laugh and joke and play around and talk out of his mouth. And then want to get to church and look like you don't know nobody. You ain't nothing but a devil. That's all you is. You're a devil. You ain't got to get mad. That's what you is. He said to inspect closely. He said to test the condition of the iniquity. He said examine and to carefully investigate. We come in here in God's word and don't investigate nothing. You know y'all get me acting like y'all so deep. Now that ain't in no book right there. I don't know, I don't know what y'all reading now. Because that ain't in no book right there. That's something I wrote down. And y'all. That communion eating. I'm going to feed you though. I'm going to force feed you. I'm going to make you throw it up. I'm going to make you go to hell. This is what it said. He said to inspect closely. Huh? Giving all dealing, making your calling a lecture. Ooh, boy, I love that. He said, to inspect closer, test the condition of. He said, carefully investigate. But this one I like. Integrate closely. Ah! <laughs> ah! I be evil to y'all. Because my word is interrogate y'all closely. It makes you know you're a sinner. It makes you know if you die, you going to hell. I don't care how much you love that. All y'all in here that hate God, don't talk to get God, got something against God. Hell is where you're going. And your God can't get you out. Ain't it bad y'all serving a God ain't got no place to put y'all Cause hell is owned by my God. He created that. I don't got mad with y'all. This is what it says. I'm going to interrogate closely. This is what it says. In Psalm 119, 89, he said, Forever, O Lord, thy word is selling in heaven. Eating God's word unworthy is a silent killer because it's selling in heaven. It's selling. Ain't nobody changed. I don't care what the preacher said. I don't care they put everybody in heaven. In Salem, they put sisters in heaven. Dice in heaven. Everybody. This is what he said. He said, that logo, that written word, y'all got that. But the spoken word, I'm giving you that. He said, forever, Lord, thy word is selling in heaven. This is what this said now. Listen, 119 11. Thy word have a hidden. Where y'all hearing God's word at? That y'all eating in them word. Where y'all hearing it at? In your stomach? Huh? You ain't put in your mind that you know you shouldn't be doing that? He ain't put, you ain't put in your mind. And then you know what get me about y'all. You know what get me about these people in Congress song. Y'all have put a man or a woman before God. If the man gone, if a woman go, y'all act like earth the life is. Get your bag and go. I'm going to take down on the joker. Can't rise me up in the morning. How I'm going to take down on the joker. Can't make the leg step before the other. How I'm going to get mad with it. And y'all talk about a joker that ain't even got a job. Ain't happening. Ain't happening. Trina can cut up if she want to. Trina can't move now and want to leave. Ha. Here y'all little talking about a man, and half the time y'all know a man or a woman, if you got down sick, they gone. If I got down sick, the Lord is right there. He said he'll never leave me, nor forsake me. Y'all look at the sitting there. Eating God, eating God word, unworthy. Y'all hear what he said? That was the time everybody want to get mad. This is what he said. He said, examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith, you'd rather be in a man's faith than to be in God's faith. I've been seeing some of y'all women around here get a joke and talking to you. I ain't even know you had that many teeth. Just smiling. I ain't even talk to me that much. Hey, <laughs> hey, amen. Hey, man. Hey, man. Father, I ain't got no, I ain't got no business talking to you that long. Shoot, you mad. 
Uh, so y'all checking credentials. Let me, let, me, let me go on that. That's a spoken word. This is what it said. Listen. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against it. How many of y'all don't hide God's word in the heart that y'all don't put a man before God or a woman before God or your car before God or your job before God? You can't testify. You better not testify. Don't lie with it too. He already know you got other things before him. I feel them, boy. I wore my communion clothes too. I wore, I got the woman and the man. Paul, I got the woman and the man. And here y'all, here y'all live today. Ain't ate none of God no, no time up. You don't miss God. You ain't ate it one day out of 30 some days. We eat often in him. But I'm worried. Because when we get out of church, we texting and communicate to stuff that ain't, people ain't even been to church. I had a hard putting that together too. I tried to find some communion thing and all this and that. Come find, I told Dean McGee, I gotta use my spirit, man. We went to Walmart, and I started letting the spirit leave. And the thing that got it, I tried to find a little sauce and put them in the cracker and couldn't find it. We went all through Walmart, everywhere, up and down. I said, Deke, let's go, man. We got to go. Deke don't left. Spirit said, you got to go one more time. You got to go through that one more time. He had to come back. He was gone. I said, Lord, here the original Deke. I said, you said God do that? You got to follow the spirit. Colonel Stone, every time I preach, every time Evangelist Simmer preach, every time Ella Simmer preach, every time Ella Walker preach, every time Minister Maxwell tell y'all something, Y'all eating God's word. I'm word. This message is to tell y'all, y'all rejecting us ain't us. He said, I'll give you the five four. All y'all sitting in here, get this word and don't go talk to nobody about it. Not even no meal at the church after you hear it. You don't share our word with nobody. That means there is a problem somewhere. Eating God's word unworthy is a silent killer. Taking God communion is a silent killer. Now let me come on. Psalm 119, 17 said, deal abundantly with thy servant. That's what I tell God, deal abundantly with me. He said, that I may live and keep thy word. Deal abundantly with me. And y'all ain't trying to live by it. This is what he said. He come back and said, he said, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Yeah. But you eating God's word though. So what makes you wiser than God? Yeah. Preachers, church members, that y'all gonna make a way that y'all don't go to hell. But y'all say y'all believe the word. Which one is it? Which one is it? He said, woe unto them that are wise in their own eye. Let that God do that. In your own eye. He know that was going to be some of y'all. He said, and prove in your own sight. You use God's eye for your, for your own self. Ain't you some? This is what he said. This is what he told me in Ezekiel 3 and, uh, and uh, 1. He said, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, apostle Simon, eat thou findest. <laughs> and y'all think it's a steak. He said, eat thou finest. Eat this what's holy. Eat this. He said, eat this the finest. He said, this, he said, eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. Go speak to Zion Ho. Go speak to Little Rock. 
Go speak to one in the basket. He said, eat this, Apostle Silver, and go speak. Go to Little Rock. Go to, go to Church of Living God. Go to Watts. Go to anywhere. Go eat it. Eat it and go. And don't nobody want you to speak, though. But you got a rhyme of word. You got a rhyme of word for the people. Ain't many people got no rhyme of word. Look what he said. He said, moreover, he said unto me, Apostle Silver, eat thou finally. Eat this roll. Go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he called me to eat this roll, that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, Apostle Simba, call thou belly to eat and fill thou bowl with this roll I have gave, given thee. He said, Then I ate it and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. But it's bitter to y'all. To me, when I eat, it's like sweetness and honey. But to y'all, look at you, it's bitter. Because you know where y'all been eating God's word, unworthy, it's bitter, it's bitter. It's evil to y'all. And then y'all have a nerve and audacity to tell me you got God's spirit and you love God all over the world. They take a communion unworthy. And y'all sitting right in here have no plan to live for God. This is what they said. Let me just read that again. He said unto me, Son of man, Apostle Simba, call thou belly to eat and fill thou bowels with this roll that I give thee. He said, then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, Apostle Silver, go get thee unto the house of Cornerstone of Israel and speak with my word unto them. He said, go. Ezekiel eat. Everybody eat. He come back in Jeremiah 15, 16. He said, I word found, and I did eat them. And I word, huh? And I word was unto me joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord of hope. Jeremiah eat. Now Apostle Silver eat. And he's not eating unworthy. But it's joy to me, but it's bitter. It's bitter to y'all. This is what he said in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. He said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It don't come from me. It ain't come from me. If it's from God, I'm just a rhema speaker. The rhema spoken. He said, it was proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And now I'm finding out that preachers don't believe it because they don't want to tell nobody that. They want to have a smooth word for the people that the people keep coming and they don't lose nobody. I can lose the whole church because it's sweet as honey to me. But it's bitter to a sinner. It's bitter to y'all that's against God. You, all you want to do is put on your black and white and take communion once a month. But you live like a devil the rest of the time. He said, eating God's word, unworthy, it's a silent killer. It's killing y'all right now, y'all don't even know. He said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the men of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. How many of them can say their work is good? Huh? Without making excuses. That's what he said. He said in the eighth verse of Ezekiel 3, he said, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faith, and thy forehead strong against their forehead, as a hammer. He said, Harden than a flint. Have I made thy forehead? He said, fear them not, neither be the maid at their look. Do they be the rebellious house? A rebellious bunch of people in Cornerstone. Rebellious, got your own mind. I'm going to do it my way. Y'all can't tell me what to do. This is what he said. He said, knowing God exists, 
but choosing to remain lost is like knowing how to swim and choosing rather than to drown. I mean, you got a chance to get out of what you in. You got a chance to get out of what you in. But still, you swimming and you know how to swim, you go on and say, blue, blue, blue. You just blue, blue, blue. Y'all gonna sit right at him and knowing how to exist off of God's word, but saying, I'd rather not. What I like and what I do, I'm enjoying. Been getting this word, eating this word, and when you leave her, ain't no conversation by the word. When you go to work, ain't no conversation by the word. Even you got co-workers you don't even share the word with. But you swear you're drinking God's word. Ain't y'all? Can I help? Ain't nothing in here. That's how y'all be faking. Y'all act like y'all taking communion. Y'all act like y'all drinking God's word. Y'all act like y'all eating God's word. You're a bunch of liars. And all liars gonna have their paw. Everybody, everybody don't left them. They ain't like this communion. They ain't like this breaking bread. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. This is what he said. He said, if you are not meeting the devil head on, then are you going in the same direction? How many of y'all got a fight with the devil? <laughs> y'all ain't got no fight with the devil. When y'all fight coming when you come to church. Because have y'all come to church with the devil? Why he said that? It's the truth. Where y'all think the devil spend most of his time at? He ain't got to be out there doing nothing in the world. This is what he said. He said, if the Bible is stepping on your toe, it's because your feet are in the wrong place. Right. Let me come on down here because I know y'all about ready to go. He said, unsufficient and worthy, undeserving, a bad plan, worthless, unworthy. He said, that's what we got, Terry. He said, just bad. Revelation 10 said this in the 8th verse. He said, and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up and it shall be it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Sometimes it get bitter when you eat it. But when you get it down and you start speaking it out, it all be honey to somebody. It delivered Mitchell. It was sweet to Mitchell. He kept on eating. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. He said, and I took the little book out of the hand out of the angel hand and ate it. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. <laughs> if from, from in the back then it was sweet, back down it's sweet, at the end it's still sweet. Yeah. It were sweet to me. Y'all yeah. ain't got no clap in your heart. Y'all ain't got no exaltation of God's word. A silent killer. That's a silent killer. It's sweet to those that are doing it in here. But to us ain't doing it, it's bitter. It messing right now, it's bitter. Because you taking God word unworthy. You thought communion just a, was in communion. No, no. It started in John. Because God was telling him, eat of me. And we, we took it on because, see, the church hadn't started when John was talking. <laughs> but in Corinthians, it was Paul. Paul said, look, don't eat this old word. Paul was telling them. I'm telling y'all. And then people try to wonder, why apostles don't get communion? Why I'm going to help kill y'all when I know y'all already about dead? Why I'm going to give y'all something that I know from the scriptures? 
The spoken word told me, why would I pour salt into your wound when you're already cut open? Why I'm going to help kill you? I'm going to preach to you and let you come up by the real community, by the real word. And right now, it ain't sweet and honey. It's bitter. It's bitter. That's why y'all look like you. You look like somebody done slapped you about six times. Bitter. Ain't no way I can be saved and looking like y'all looking. Bitter. Y'all done got to sit now. And you want to change churches? Look, you don't owe me nothing. Like, like, like the President Lepper before said, you, he said he don't, he don't owe me nothing. You don't owe me nothing. But, but before you go, examine yourself. Examine yourself whether you be of the faith. Examine yourself. That's what I'm talking about. Examine yourself. He said, prove your own self. Know you not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you itself. You don't have to go if you're right with God. This is what he said. He said, we then, that's 2 Corinthians 6 and 1, we then as workmen together with him to seek you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Amen. That you receive not God's word in vain. See, that's what I like about me. Because see, this is how I know I'm called to be a logo preacher as well as a rainbow. Right. Because I don't use number of scripture. Right. Everybody else typing what they type, type this. Everything that I use and God give me to you, it deal with what I'm talking about. Y'all ain't got to get mad with me because cause me and God mouth to mouth. This is what it says. Men are troubled because the Bible interferes with their life. That's why y'all looking like that. This interferes with y'all life. This is what it says. He said, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, huh? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, he began to repent. This is what it said. He's talking to us. He said, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. That was, that was God said in Isaiah 5, 55 and 11. He said it won't come into me void. So when I speed it out, when I speak it out, and I spit out the truth, it ain't coming back void. So what are you going to do? It got to accompany what I say. If it say you going to hell, it got to accompany that. If it say you're a liar, it got to accompany that. He said, but it shall accompany that which is, I plead. He said, it shall prosper in the thing where two I sin it. That's what God said. He come back in St. John 15, 5. He said, I am the true vine, you are the branch. He that abide in me as I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can't do nothing. And here y'all trying to be successful without God. You're trying to start your own denomination. Without God. You, you just all messed up. This is what he come back and said. This is why I'm telling you how important it is to have the Holy Ghost. He come back in St. John 14, 26. I feel my help coming on, y'all. He said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He said, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which I won't leave you. Comfort, I'll send you another one. He said, whom the Father will send in my name. It shall teach you all things, Apostle Simon. He said, and bring you in the Thing, bring you all things into your remember. Whatsoever I have said unto you, it'll bring it back to you. And you can't tell me that you would think that somebody can get on their deathbed and make it in. He said, it's his feet that I go away. If I don't go, don't y'all hold me, Jeff. That's what he said. He's talking to him. Then he come back and said, he said, in St. John 3 and 18, he said, he that believe on him is condemned. Yeah. It's not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already. Yeah. Anybody that think they can live any kind of way and wait till the last minute to get saved, you don't believe. Yeah. You don't believe. If you think somebody can just live any kind of way and wait till their last minute, you don't believe. Because that ain't what the scripture talks about. That's what it says. Yeah, he said, but he that believe is not condemned already. See, I'm, I'm speaking the truth. He said, because he has not believed in the name of the only God. That right there, that proof right there. Yeah. Talking about scripture. He come back in St. John 14, 21. He that has my commandment and keep them, he it is that love me. And he that loveth me not, huh? 
He that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will uh, love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Now, this is to prove that one just waited till he was about to die. In John 14, 24, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. Talking about find some scripture. They all in the book. Unless you're just a logo preacher. You don't have the rainbow. He, I get it to you. He said, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. He's telling you that. I love God right there. In 2 Corinthians 7 to 10, it said, it said it, you know, it just told y'all about y'all. He said, taking God's word unworthy. In 2 Corinthians 7 to 10, he said, for godless sorrow, work of repentance to salvation, not to be repented, but the sorrow of the world working death. All y'all that after the world, it working death. And then all y'all, if I ask y'all who believe the Bible, all y'all raise y'all hand up. So that tell me, if you raise your hand up, that tell me one thing, you don't care about what it said. It's what it said. He come back and said, 1 John 2 and 24, it said, let that thou for abide in you. He said, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, shall abide in you, shall remain in you, shall abide in you. You don't leave church and forget what you heard. You don't leave all the words that you forgot what you heard and still do what you want to do. Ella Simmer told y'all, what God said to y'all is evil. Because when you're doing what you want to do, it don't feel bad. Come on, testify. Boy, I tell you one thing. Y'all know how to uh, get away. Listen to what he said right here in St. John 5, 38 and 37. St. John 5, 38 and 37. He said, and you have not his word abiding in you. You have not his word remaining in you. Y'all just coming in here. It ain't remaining in you. He said, for whom he has sent, his word, him you believe now. He said, such the scripture. And he said, such the Raymond word, such the scripture. Such it, Ellen, such it. He said, such the scripture. He said, for in them you think you have eternal life. Some of y'all think y'all going to heaven. You ain't going to heaven. If you were going to heaven, that flight would cancel. If you had plans to go and you put in, it counsel. They got well other problem on that day. So you got to go on where you go on. This is what he said. I'll be mad with I'll be mad with the devil too. Fooling me to go to hell. I'll be mad with you too. Don't look up here mad at me. Be mad at the devil. He said, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they that will testify against me. He come back in Matthew 22 and 29. He said, Jesus answered and said unto him, you do error not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. And what he said, I love God, man. He's so good. Ain't he pleasant? He's so easy going. And that's what he said. He tell her in his word. He said, eating God's word unworthy is a silent killer in the church. Taking the Lord's Supper unworthy is a silent killer in the church. Prove it to me, Pastor Silver. Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. I just went to the doctor the other day, and she told me, be sure that you take all your antibiotics. All of them. She said, till you feel better, she ain't said nothing. She said, complete the task. So the words y'all don't heard, which one have y'all completed? Which one y'all had applied to y'all life, the medication that God had gave out of him? That's why you're still sick. Look at you. You're sick. You're weakly. You're going to sleep. And you won't go to sleep on your movies. You won't, 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 won't go to sleep on what you like. You won't go to sleep on that man you on the phone with. But now y'all want to daze off in somewhere. Y'all ready to take communion? Yeah. 
Y'all ready to take a million? It's the first of the month. We ain't got to have one black and white. Because when y'all come to church, when I'm preaching our, a communion, you ain't got on black and white. We, we got it. We got, we, we, y'all ready? <laughs> one thing about y'all, Joker, y'all heard that message. <laughs> y'all don't want no part of communion. And Trina, they don't want no part of it, Trina. Not today. The they don't want no part of the communion. Now go tell people, man, I thought we wouldn't take a communion. Boy, we take communion every seven. Every seven we take communion. And as I come to somewhere in my departure, Jews say, 1, 22 to 25, and some has compassion, making a difference. Me, Reg, Pastor Simmons. He says, some have compassion, making a difference. I'm no way tired. He said, other say with fear, pulling them out of the fire. That's why I preach like I preach. I don't care about y'all getting mad. You need to get your little smoked up self out that fire. Y'all ain't the Hebrew boy. Y'all burnt. This is what he said. He said, put them out of the fire. Hating evil, the garment spotted by the flare. He said, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, huh? And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. He said, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majestic, dimension and power, both now. Both now, both now, God, you're awesome, God, you're awesome. It didn't that happen until I gave up what I was doing wrong. That's when he blessed me. A lot of y'all want a lot of stuff, but you won't give it up. You, you, you can't go out to stuff and things and a man and this and that and exalt them before God and then want God to bless you. He's not, he not going to pay your rent while you're shacking. This is what he said. Now, as I close, he said, Well, for thou rather, brother, give diligence to make your calling of the next year. He said, Don't take no other thing. Make sure that you make your uh, calling a next year. He said, for, in, for if you do these things, you would never fall the Pastor Silver. That's what I told somebody. I said, I don't make my election sure I would never fall. Never fall. You can pray. Y'all can put your little wish cloud stuff up on me. You can count the church. Stop, stop putting all the little wish stuff around the church and all this stuff y'all do. I would never fall. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me come on. Let me come on. Let me come on. And as I cold, as I bring this ship in the dark, yeah, uh, uh, 2 Peter 1 and, and, and 19 it said but we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that take heed all y'all ain't taking heed you ain't doing well you ain't doing well I don't care about you looking crazy. You need to look crazy. All these words y'all been eating, and then y'all still lose, losing weight? We talking about spiritual. That's what it said. He said, we have all also a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto you do well that take heed, and unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Ain't that amazing how had a, the, the cross had a, a light on it. Yeah. He was the light of the world, one, and you still won't lose. He said, "Until the the day dawn." He said, "And the day star arise in your heart." Why don't star around that the truth and the whole truth? Why don't stars around? He said, day star. He said, arise a day star. Why the stars are all around the church, around the pool up here? It ain't talking about us, it's talking about him. He said, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. He said, he said, 
the day start rising your heart, he said, knowing there this first, that there are no private in prophecy of the scripture of any private interpretation. For the prophet came not of old time by the will of man. You can't get this uh, with the logo. You got to spend some time you got to get that spirit of God in you. See, a lot of people preach it, but a lot of people ain't got the spirit of God. See, I ain't changed since the beginning. First message, what the hell do you want? I ain't changed yet. I ain't, I ain't the, when the church got people left, I ain't changed the, the, the gospel to, to look for money. I ain't trying to look for money. I kept doing what it said. You know, you know why I kept doing what it said? Because I knew what time it was. I'd examine myself. He's telling us, oh God, ain't he awesome? Y'all act like he ain't awesome, man. He said, for the prophet came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God speck as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I'm telling y'all, I told Mitch, I had my word again, I had my robe out, and God told me, Terry, that ain't what I want. One cross, three nails. Gave me my forgiveness. I see some of y'all hands are very heavy. Your heart is very heavy. And your mind is overloaded because God has exposed you this morning to realize that y'all are eating God's word unworthy and it's a silent killer. And ain't no doctor can diagnose it but him. And as I close, Christ's body sacrifice, Christ's blood atonement, Christ's flesh became the word of God. I am for peace, but when I speak, there is for war. I'll never eat God's word unworthy that I don't think enough to say, God, for you I live and for God I die. Because when you sit on the cross, it is finished. I know you did it for me. And all y'all can sit here and act like y'all good with God. I know that's a lie. Y'all can sit here and, and don't repent. It's, it's fine. I ain't mad with nobody. Every man got to be persuaded by his own mind. All I know God told me, that communion taking y'all taking, you're taking it unworthy. The word y'all taking, y'all taking unworthy. And by thy word, you're going to be condemned. And by our word, you're going to be justified.